And John Lee talks about <clears throat> the skill, or the meditative skill, of being able to talk to beings on different levels. He doesn't say as much that this is what he's been doing himself, but you get the sense that he has some practical experience. One of the questions is, if you're going to talk to animals, what do you talk about? He says, basically, you ask them, how are you eating? Are you eating a full? Is it easy to find what you want to eat? All beings, from the lowest levels to the highest, are concerned with feeding. That's how we define ourselves. Like the Buddha said, when you recollect your past lives, that's one of the things you recollect, is what you ate at different levels of being. Which is why it's interesting that Dharma practice starts with giving, which is the opposite of feeding. You have something in your possession, this part of the world that you can lay claim to, and yet you don't feed on it, you give it to somebody else. This can be a material object, it can be your time, it can be your knowledge. And that's a really good way of defining yourself as a practitioner, someone who gives. The opposite of someone who's type feeding all the time. Of course you're feeding on a higher level. You're feeding the mind with good intentions, more skillful intentions. But the kind of intentions where you can feed and other people can feed too. In other words, they're feeding off of your gift, whereas you're feeding off the fact that you gave the gift. And you have the state of mind that's generous. This is how we live together in the world, why human interaction is worthwhile. But it's also the very basis for Dharma practice. Mundane right view starts with, there is what is given, there is what is sacrificed. In other words, there really is a virtue to this activity of giving, of sacrificing. You don't take your time just for you. You don't take your material things just for you. You don't take your knowledge just for you. You share it. In some cases, you give it away and, and don't have any share in it at all. But you do have a share in the virtue that comes, the qualities of the mind that come from giving away. And those become the food for higher levels of the practice. So learn how to feed skillfully off the fact that you are giving your time, giving your energy, giving your material things. Because when we feed together like this, that's when we could live together. And the practice as a whole gains energy. The lessons you learn from generosity are going to be useful as you work on the precepts, work on the meditation. After all, the precepts, as the Buddha said, are a gift. And with the meditation, there are a lot of things you've got to give up. You could be sitting here thinking about all kinds of things, entertaining yourself with different thoughts. But you say, no, I'm going to give those up for the time being. I'm going to feed on something higher. You restrain yourself from taking this, taking that. And then you find that when you restrain yourself this way, and you're forced into finding well-being without that kind of feeding, there's much better food inside. So you think of that time when John Swat said, in response to a question about why doesn't Buddhism have a god, <clears throat> he said, if there were a god who could ordain that if I take a mouthful of food, everybody else gets full, he said, I bow down to that god. Okay, there's no god who can do that. But the Buddha teaches us how we can give and then feed off the, the act of generosity. And that way, the feeding does spread around. We feed together. And as Dharma practitioners, we grow together. <clears throat>